This is Naoki Yoshida. This is Fern Hall. And you are listening to Aetherite Radio. Aetherite Radio. Here we go. Everybody's Hello. where they are. To Aetherite Radio, free of technical difficulties. <laughs> uh, we are Gamerscape's Final Fantasy XIV podcast. I'm your host, Fusion X, and joining me today, we have Zenidra Bryn, and we have a special guest joining us from Limit Break Radio, from Checkpoint Radio, and one of the co-founders of Eighth Right Radio, we have Nate Bender. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to be here. You know, anytime we think of an anniversary show, we always think about going back to our roots, and uh, you're you're in there. So uh, glad <laughs> to have you on. Deep within the roots. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to be here, and uh, congratulations on nine years. Thank you. Yeah, we, we are older than the game itself, which is really weird. Um, yeah, it's especially like, it's, it's year. five years, we're like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, always, it's always close to the, the anniversary that Square celebrates, right? But that's always based on the relaunch. And so it's like, hey, it's 14's fifth anniversary. I'm like, my podcast is nine. Someone's <laughs> going to like come in and be like, how does that? How does I, have that a, I have a brilliant idea if you guys are in. We start podcasting about Final Fantasy 19 tomorrow. Just, no, <laughs> just there you go. like, all right, it's we'll gonna be our weekly like Final Fantasy 19 post. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, so yes, this is our nine-year anniversary show. It is a little bit late. Uh, we've been busy with some real-life stuff. PAX was uh, a few weeks ago, um, which we have a lot of really cool coverage on. So make sure to go check that out. Like over a lot. At like a lot, a lot. Me, 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 and our our, our good buddy Fire Marth. Uh, we're, we're really busy running around at PAX, so make sure you either go check out the, the you, Either you get the PAX box, the plague. No, luckily. That's good. Oh, that's good. Uh, my my be... wife I got it somehow, even though she wasn't at PAX. You're a carrier. But... Oh my gosh. You're like, immune. Yeah, I, You've gone so much. You are now it immune. It is. That's and you're great. spreading it to, to the world. <laughs> you're... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, this is our nine year show. Uh, so thank you for everybody that's tuning in, everybody that listens. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys. So we definitely appreciate all your support. Um, quick update for you guys on Twitch. Um, I finally got around to adding sub badges. So if you do subscribe to us on Twitch, you can get some shiny new uh, sub badges now. Uh, we also added a new $10 emote, which is the eighth rate radio logo. If any of you are crazy enough to spend that much money on us. Um, we also want to announce to you today um, FanFest is coming up, and uh, we are going to not Go. probably be giving out a bunch of crazy new swag, uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to open up a Cafe Press store, so that way uh, all you guys can, uh, if you guys want some some GE swag or A-Fret Radio swag to represent uh, out at FanFest, you can go ahead and grab a shirt, uh, bag, coffee mugs, whatever, whatever you want. Uh, it's up there. Uh, we will be looking to add a Final Fantasy FanFest design. Uh, at some point in, in the next few weeks here for FanFest. So if you want to wait for that and see what that's going to be, we have a, a few designs we're looking at right now to uh, to finalize for that. So keep an eye out. Um, and then also while we're out at FanFest, uh, and this is another great reason why we have Nate here, uh, there's going to be the Limit Break Radio uh, community after party. Nate, tell us a little bit more about that. That's right. So uh, on the uh, Saturday night of FanFest, we are going to be hosting the uh, semi-annual after party for FanFest. Uh, the thing about that is, uh, or no, I'm sorry, it's on the Friday night, I think. Um, Very I important. Probably yeah. It always, it always I should probably, I should you probably can, have you that. Can do it two nights. Friday, like, there's no rule says you can't do it both nights. Just but. show up. We'll party both <laughs> nights, guys. It's fine. <laughs> so anyway, what we're doing uh, bigger and badder than the previous years that we have done it, uh, we are throwing an after party at the Luxor in Las Vegas at the eSports Arena, which uh, we actually went to the opening of as a part of Checkpoint Radio. Um, so when we were there, we were scoping the whole place out like, dude, this would be an awesome after party. So uh, we decided that's where we wanted to put it. And uh, we're opening it up to not just Limit Break Radio fans. We want to uh, encompass all of the creative community for Final Fantasy XIV. So there's going to be a lot of people that, you know, if you guys are watching Twitch, if you guys are watching YouTube, that you guys are going to recognize um, that uh, that's going to be at that party. So uh, you can uh, come party with us. The uh, 
VIP packages are about 60 bucks, which includes open bar, which, I mean, Whoa. listen, <laughs> right? Where do I sign up? Right. <laughs> 60 bucks, like, 60 wait a bucks to get VIP tickets. You're partying with the creative community for Final Fantasy 14, and it gets you open bar. I mean, that is actually a really great value for Vegas. That's I've six drinks in Vegas, and an open bar is more than bar. six drinks. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So uh, we've got the uh, RSVP up over at our website, uh, LimitBreakRadio.com. Uh, you can also get your RSVP reservations in for the VIP lounge. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, we're super excited to be uh, doing this this year. And, uh, yeah, we've got a, a, a lot of big announcements around the corner for Limit Break Radio. So um, this may be among the last opportunities that you guys get to party with Limit Break Radio. So take the opportunity and come out and uh, come to the eSports Arena at the Luxor in Las Vegas. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I will be there. Um, I know some other people that'll be there. Uh, we are actually hashing out the details later today after the show. Yes. Um, so look out for, for more details on that. Um, and that is Friday, November 16th at 8 p.m. We're partying from 8 p.m. to midnight. So uh, come and hang out. It is a awesome venue. Uh, there's going to be, I believe, a Fortnite tournament going on downstairs. Uh, but we've got the entirety of the upstairs to ourselves. Uh, we've got the access to their uh, broadcast studio. So uh, we're going to have elements that will be going out live over Twitch as well. So uh, make sure you join us. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a blast. Yeah, and definitely uh, keep an eye out on uh, on Twitter for, for everything, too. If you aren't going to be uh, out in Vegas for FanFest, we'll be we'll be tweeting everything out uh, for that. So you guys can follow along as well. So um, there we go. Um, next up, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about the patch. It happened. There was, it was pretty there good. There was a patch, guys. There is new content. I've, I've done most of it already. Um, I yeah. bet that's what a lie. Not done? What have you not done? Uh, the stuff that I probably normally wouldn't do anyway. So, like, I haven't done Extreme. I haven't done Savage. I haven't done, like, the delivery stuff to, like, Glamour, Chloe, like... Or slow, Zoe, Chloe, one of them. There's, yeah, Zoe, there's two of them. Chloe, yeah, they're Black. sisters. I never even did the last keep up with them. Yeah. stuff. So that was what uh, Friday. Yeah, mm. I think, yeah, that's right, Karen. I. Um, all right, so <laughs> this isn't going to be a spoiler episode. Um, we're not even. A, I know, I know. Britain is disappointed. Well, it's there? just for the fact that we like. We'll see you guys in, in a month, and by that point, everyone's like, "Yeah, it's all." I was so like, what we're we're gonna be looking into the possibility of doing uh, spoiler episodes. So this this past week, uh, over on our Gamer Escape Discord, uh, we did make a spoiler chat uh, or a channel, um, so people can discuss the, the the latest goings on. Because obviously, we don't want to spoil it for people that haven't done it yet. Um, and, and the thing I struggle with is I know learning. people so. have different spoiler sensitivities. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right, um, well in order to make sure we try to respect everybody uh there was an update That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's rough because i'll like i'll do the msq and then um i want to you know tell my wife about it like as soon as she comes home because like i work from home so as soon as she shows up i'm like oh my god you're not gonna believe she's like i don't want to hear it yeah I, I, I tell her about like omega That's like the ultimate problem like why would you spoil your wife you're screwed up. Man. I, need, I, need, I need to talk about it with somebody, right? Like, yeah, I saw your tweet. Make friends. You tweeted it out. You're like, you were like, now oh we gosh, have go now we have a channel on our Discord. You can talk, we can about, talk it. about it. Fusion can didn't that think over. it was going to be popular. It's been very popular. It's very popular. Uh, Discord.gg slash gamer escape. I should make a a command. A Twitch <laughs> command for that. Yeah, that's a very good point. I There's also really uh, not, a lot of fun yeah. theories in it, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you get through with the happens. MSQ and you're like, oh, but I think it's this. Oh, but I think it's this. And there's a lot of that in there. So if that's the sort of stuff you're interested in, join. Well, I would, I would say that makes what I would think when I look at just the MSQ as a, a why I think it's the it's the, the crown jewel of this patch. Mm -hmm. um, it's because not only just like you said, like I thought I enjoyed every moment of it. It really was just I consumed it, loved it. But your point is is 100 percent like to that. There's a thousand ways this could go, in my opinion, you know, and yeah. so it's like we can now it's like the the debate and the the theories and the theory crafting is just on fire because it's like it's, oh, it's really funny for me, like throughout Stormblood, um, 
at the beginning the story wasn't great to me yeah I'm with you. right i mean and we've been through this a million times like they killed xenos all you know off like oh great we killed the big bad guy but he was like defeating us multiple times throughout i'm like why couldn't you have kept him around longer and then they kind of did but didn't at the same time is he back uh, is he is he you know what's he but doing now with? now that we're kind of past the the halfway point here it's like the content's not really doing it for me anymore like eureka pagos is terrible <laughs> absolutely terrible for 14 but now the story is amazing <laughs> yeah so i, 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 don't, I don't know there there was there was an entire section of this msq that i absolutely hated and it was right right but the the section that you have to do that contains the the battle in it and it wasn't mm -hmm. the battle right okay so a couple of things right I, i've seen a few posts on the official forums bitching about that fight that it was too hard. What? Yeah, it's broken. Man, it's you, broken. Whiny, you, you whiny man babies you... need to shut up because <laughs> that that was the first fun solo fight that I've experienced in the entire game. You can it, break it, it though. It was great. It was great. I loved it. I had and to do was... it twice because How it was it broken. broken? It I got everybody down to zero and it was it's like that. nothing's yeah. happening. Oh, oh you got it. You got a bugged one. Yeah, I got I got a yeah. bug twice on me and I was like by the third by the third time I'm like cleared it. I'm with you the first time. Oh, this is fantastic. By the third yeah. time, I'm like, just for the love of God. Yes. No, no, no. Because <laughs> you're right. Like, I, I, had, uh, I had died on the meteors phase because I, I hadn't... Uh, I, I hadn't dropped uh, whatever the, the defensive buff is for Dark Knight. So I wasn't doing, you know, the best DPS that I could, and I was just missing it by, like, a sliver. Yeah. And I was, and so, you know, you go back, you readjust. But I can't believe the amount of complaining that I've seen about that fight. Square Enix should never touch that fight, should never tune that fight, should never readjust it. That no. was actually really good. All of the story around that fight, though, you could have just cut that with the chaff. It was awful, and it was pointless. Oh, I thought it was funny. I like the banter after the fight. That was yeah. one of my favorites. Anything yeah. that really? gets me into that... the Azim step, anything that gets me into that zone, I give an immediate credit. Like, it's like, yeah, it might not get the pa like a full pass, but it will take it from a C to a B for me. Yes, it was uh, anytime very... Anytime I can go into that zone, because it's like, and that's the whole my whole biggest complaint. It's like, anytime the game brings me into one of their zones that are just, I think, are beautiful, I go, why the hell do I not hang out here? Oh, there's nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Not yeah, it, it was problem. pretty uh, stereotypically anime in a way, but... <laughs> yeah. Very, very. That's why I hated it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, all right, but enough about that. Uh, we'll go first here. Uh, we had a new trial. We had uh, Suzaku. Mm -hmm. um, Very phoenixy. It's yeah. It's it's more of like a phoenix thing. It's not just like a bird. You know, coming from that eleven background, or like, oh, it's just a bird. Great. Well, no, this is more of a phoenix thing, which is really interesting when you get into the idea of we already know the four lords tie in with Tenzin, mm -hmm. and if you played fourteen or eleven, you know the relationship that Tenzin had with Phoenix, and there's something kind of similar there in in 14 which i think is really cool um but let's talk about the fight um Biako, we had skydiving bullet hell yeah was its new thing uh suzaku we get ddr yeah that's one of the things that's cool you see the different symbols and you're just like okay that's the order pop 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 and you just gotta run into the i, I thought that was kind of clever i don't know how well, you know if that's going to be something that gets old real quick but uh, the first two, you know, the first two or three times. I feel like, like they oh, should take fun. that game and put it in Gold Saucer. It's oh, that, kinda, yeah. yeah, why yeah. not? It's kind of fun. It's it's easy. It's something you can get, you know, like 50 I mean, look, if Overwatch could put DDR in its new map, I think we can get DDR in the Gold Saucer. I think that's only fair. That's Sounds cool. easy enough. Why the uh, first day that that fight was out, it was glitched. Did anybody experience that? Mm. I didn't hear about that. It was super fun. Uh, so in, I don't know, second or third phase, uh, she turns into a she and then sitting on a bird, kind of like a surfboard. Yeah. The bird goes to the outside of the arena and goes around the outside of the arena. And as it flies through these symbols that are on the outside, the corresponding symbol on a quadrant of the floor explodes. Sometimes she skips the symbol accidentally because of server ticks. So you think that you need to avoid oh. something. You don't. And then at the end of the line, it explodes again. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It was super fun. I can, I can see how that would make it really fun, yeah. Super fun. So, I mean, people, even when it's working fine, some people have a problem with it. It really helps to have a, a call-out. 
But, uh, yeah, just, you know, stuff exploding when it's not supposed to. Super fun. Mm -hmm. Nice. Two of those. I love the, uh, the background after the, uh, the oh, transition. Oh, yes! The skybox is beautiful. It's yeah, it's it's like a you think like a like Japanese like oil paintings or like a cal calligraphy kind of thing where it's like yeah. drawing like clouds and stuff. It looks really cool. I think it looks they did a really cool job with that arena. I definitely um, I was taking my static through last night and uh, everybody had died while I was teaching them the symbol ground thing. I was like, just take a moment, everybody, look at the sky. And everybody was like, oh, <laughs> appreciate it. I, I loved the the first time I did it watching uh, watching our tank try to figure out the GDR part. Aww. He just he kept facing like every other direction except the one he needed to. I'm like, it's GDR. Like face the arrow. Just well, and then away. you get those you get the stacking damage up, which is just you know, in and of itself, yeah. a lot of fun. I definitely I if like, I try like, and do right, it, I earn this. Yeah. <laughs> if I try and do it with WASD, I always miss the last one. Always. So for the longest time, I was, I I play on legacy mode because I play Bart, and I don't want to turn around yeah. when I'm running, right? So. Uh, I would switch to standard mode while it was charging up to have the arrows, and then I would switch back to legacy mode when the arrows were done and it was charging up to wow. do its two hour. Until I figured out, because uh, if you uh, hold down right click and just sort of turn with it, it's, it's frankly, it's the easiest yeah. way to do it. But if you uh, look above and use the mouse to just sort of click in the right direction, that also works. So I started doing that and not having to switch. Yeah, I just, I just tilt my camera, so I'm just looking straight down and I just... Yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, Omega, the final part of Omega. Did you guys? It was good. I, I. You don't like it? Saw so shaking, shaking head over it. there. Oh, okay. I, 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 I enjoyed it. What I didn't enjoy was the second fight's recycling of music. I guess. Oh, uh, the A A two's recycling of music. Yeah. Okay, I was like. But now the second. song drops from it. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean that's that's true, but it's like we've heard that song so many times, and I guess yes, it is the theme of a character, but at the same time, it's like I don't it, know. there's a lot of of stuff they've been doing in Stormblood that just feels lazy. <laughs> really. <laughs> the, uh, I get I get so <laughs> much noted. I get so much crap for like like I, I any slightly critique of the game and people are like, you hate it, why don't you own sub? It's like actually the opposite. I love the game. I have my fear is they're working on something big and then it, they're not. Like if they're not working on something big, then it, they, I'm gonna hit a wall and it's like, well, okay, that was a big, I'm a huge letdown. But I just, I keep everything, especially with this MSQ, especially with what, what essentially the theme is here. like the recycling things, but we're not really seeing what we've seen in the past from the team. It, it yeah. the, the, the engineer, the software developer in me goes, they are working on something and it's, and I hope it's as big as I want it to be. They're still just going back and forth on Blitzball. <laughs> if they, if they, they need to, they, if they have not made a decision on that, that would Plus, be. Plus you're going to have to like, so do we make it more like the one in 10 or do we make it? No, no, I want no, it no. to be uh, something like uh, an assault on Garlemald that they're working on, figuring out yeah. how, to, how to make that work. Yeah, I say just bring I mean, the campaign. They've got to do. They've got to do something because I mean, yeah. it's it's just it's painfully obvious the amount of copy paste work that's happening in FF14 these days. Yep. And I mean, you know, we've been calling it out on Limit Break Radio for the better part oh, of a yeah. year. We caught on to this back in Heaven's Word when, when we started to work into these same ruts. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it, Stormblood, at least to me, has seemed like an expansion of all rut. And, and now we're just in this place where it's like, where do we go from here? Because I, I, I mean, like, what, where do we actually, for 5.0, yeah. go from here? Does Square Enix continue on their path that they've been on, trying to get new people in you know, under the tent, or do they start trying to double down on the people that they've had, right? Yeah. When, mm -hmm. there, there needs to be at some point a switch and a refocus from bringing new people in to keeping, keeping. the people that you already have. Yeah, I, I did that. Uh, I did a video um, why 14 is dying, and that's kind of what I ended up seeing from the comments. People who played since 1.0, the, the the further back you've played, the more likely you're to agree with basically what Nero just said. Um, 
the, the, the newer you are, there's a lot of content for you. There's a lot of game for you. And it's definitely new and exciting. And I, I, that's the, the conclusion that I've, I've kind of reached. It's like, what are they doing? Um, and it, you know, I, I've kind of boiled it down to the problem of progression. That it's like, what are, like, XP is worthless at Cap. There's so much content. There's like, the, the game is- The world is worthless at Cap. It's I mean, worthless. Yeah. Right, but it's like, there is so much content that we drop immediately by the wayside. Uh, yes. So you look at Fates, you look at like, yeah, you're like, I don't want to do Fates, I don't want to do Leafs. Yeah, I'm with you. But like, it becomes completely irrelevant once you don't need it for XP. It becomes com like uh, dungeons. Like we just like, hey, we've made all these great dungeons and we're going to let you run the same two over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So you hate them <laughs> and then you never want to see them again. But then there's like 70 dungeons behind you that it's like, oh, we don't do anything with those. I think uh, they're trying it's... to add more items that people will want to go back for. Like, they tried that with songs, and that kind of worked. But uh, the new one, for people who are interested in housing, mm -hmm. uh, St. The role feature, like where they can yeah. put the tags. Well, no, Saint, Saint, is it St. Mosian's? Something yeah, like that? The Arboretum. The Arboretum. I, just, I just call it the Arboretum. Yeah, the Arboretum. I, I do not know how to pronounce that first word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that they... would be mocaine. It's sort of like when you take mushrooms and you chop them up with your cocaine. Mocaine. Okay, yeah. mocaine. fair. Thank we'll, you. we'll go with it. All I'm right. just going to have to be like, hey, Nate, how do I say this word? I don't There's know a it. housing <laughs> thing that drops from that. It's a partition cool. that has just like solid plants on it because people love to huh. do that, right? That's, that's a new thing. So I think maybe in the future we'll see more stuff dropping from just dungeons that yeah. people that well, enjoy different aspects of the game are going to want. I mean, and that, that helps to a point, but, yeah, it's, but just, it's more of like a band-aid, you know? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I'm actually much more in, in, in Bryn's camp on this one. Uh, you know, I, I think that there is such a glut of content that is sitting at the 50 and 60 caps mm -hmm. that they could go and space out. There's no reason to have that kind of content stuck at, yeah. at the caps that it's at. And if you think about it, anyone who came in, you know, uh, during Stormblood, they don't have any context for, you know, two thirds of the dungeons that sit at the 50 cap. Yeah. Why not? try and and recontextualize or re-incentivize some of those some of those you know pieces of content that are literally sitting around and collecting dust and and nate here's the big kicker all the work from a coding perspective is done for yes. that they yes. can they can take the they like that's where from an investment perspective like yes it's copy paste you scale it up every time you beat the dungeon you let the dungeon level up you say well now the dungeon monsters are level 80 good luck we don't care like right. you know, it, it's self-adjusting dynamic content. But you look at Heaven on High and Palace of the Dead, you look at all these other systems, like Heaven on High and Palace of the Dead introduced modifiers. Those modifiers can easily be applied. And so as you want a deeper challenge, you just turn on more modifiers, you let the game handle it. And then all of a sudden, guess what? You're running in the dungeon and you've got pox. And like, how can you do that? How do you manage it? You're not auto right. You know, it's like they have everything they need. And it's, I've kind of I've kind of expressed that Stormblood is sitting on a mountain of potential energy. It's not, it, ARR had a lot of kinetic energy, energy mm -hmm. in motion. Um, and then it's slowly, as we've gotten to this point, it's shifted more into potential. Like they've already done the work. It's just a matter of taking right. the very cards, shuffling it together and, and there you go. Um, I think there's a technical hurdle that the game is really facing. And there was an interview that just came out from Yoshi P and Dual Shockers talking about mega servers, uh, essentially that being some kind of destination. And you look at your, and I look at that, and I look at Eureka. Like we talk about, like Fusion, you said that Eureka Pagos is, is garbage. I think the reason why it's that way is literally they don't have the technical uh, hurdles overcome yet, and that's that Eureka is an instance content because overall, as a part of the data center that we're like some of us are on, but regardless, Primal and Aether, um, the fact that we can't do open world content together. That's why Eureka had to become instant. So we, the problem I have with Eureka is I can't invite people into it. Like if mm -hmm. I'm getting online and somebody, and like, let's say we're all playing together and then, oh, Nate's running late. Oh, guys, we got to drop. You know, we, we spent all this time trying to form this group and that's just wasted time. Right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, it could be good content. It's just, I think when I look at it, they've created the instances of the instance. So you, they can instance individual zones. What they hopefully will do is that they'll basically turn it into shards where it doesn't matter what server you're on you're on the data center and then all of a sudden they can overcome and hopefully then introduce open world content because now you don't have to work because we're running maps like as the pre-show 
what are you doing? I do maps. I love it, but I'm limited to the selection of people on my server. So how do we get over? How do we overcome that? And that's that's where when I'm looking at the dual shockers interview, when I'm looking at it, I'm hoping. I, I think that's where they're going. That's what he says he's what they're doing, but that's where I I, I fall back to. It's potential energy. It's that's it's, where we shifted. It's, it's really interesting that you bring up that point because I've never really thought about that. That the type of content that Square Enix has been developing, including things like Lords of Verminion or um you know heaven on high mm -hmm. they're they're more made for um uh, you know a a large population sitting on you're right like a like a single shard or yeah. um having the entirety of the pool of the population available for that it the problem really rears its ugly head when you start fragmenting that and you start segmenting the population and the more you segment it the less potential pool for people there are to participate in any given event correct and i think that that's i think that's a great point you know we've moved incrementally that way between you know party finder and dungeon finder and cross world link shells and all of that stuff but all of those have very clearly only been band-aids and have been very bad band-aids at that <laughs> this the the cross world link shell is quite possibly one of the worst design features of ff14 uh, excuse me sir you haven't touched mannequins yet have you no i have not <laughs> i have not um but the you know like from from that point of view i do think you know if they moved into a uh, single shard direction that that would be really beneficial for the the way that the game operates the way just being making sure that there are enough people to fill any given event mm -hmm. right so imagine then if you like you're out in the open world and right now like it says oh the the desired population for this uh, for thanalin is uh 200 people or 150 people well then, it the system balances that out, and it says, "Oh, we, you know, there's 160 people here." So then it says, "Okay, we're just going to make, you know, we're just going to move people into the next instance and balance that accordingly." Right. And from that perspective, all of a sudden, then you can bring back a lot of uh, open world content. Fates can become relevant. I mean, they still need to fix the problem with XP at cap. They should. Sure. They should just give you paragon levels. I, I'm going to talk about that this week, but a lot, I don't want to just rail on it on, on the happy anniversary right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah but, right. but like to silence point like would i want every open world zone to be like eureka uh, kind of you know it's like i love some of the concepts like it speaks to my 11 player in me it speaks sure. to the danger of traveling in this zone but you can't do that in the way that the original zones are set up you have to make sure that there are people there to, to have your back and to help support you and if, if no one's there no nothing's going to happen with it and the other side of it is I also look at it from a budget cost, right? Mm -hmm. We would get pissed off. Like all of us would be mad. It's like, why are they investing their time in this content that no one's going to do? It's like they got to, they have to look at solving the, the, the open world player problem and that, that problem that they've been doing band-aids for. Otherwise it is going to be like PVP. People like I see it all the time, complain about PVP. I happen to enjoy it. But the problem is, is that they're still seg it's such a small segmented community. So they're looking, they're talking about cross data center stuff to help you know improve the volume of people playing so you get right. faster matches and thus people don't feel like they're just throwing money at this content that isn't for them it's like you know like the game's a theme park it's trying to appeal to all these different things but there's just things that i think i'm i'm hoping for and that's where it comes down to that's where it's like i think they're working on something big i think they're trying to solve this problem and i if, if i'm wrong i'm going inevitably to be pretty upset about it isn't that how guild <laughs> yeah. wars 2 uh, kind of works server wise in a way yeah um, they all they have their have, separate they still servers. have servers and things like that but like yeah. when, when playing but you can hop it almost like just they will. Click of say, a hey, this, there's not that many people in this zone right now do you want to switch to a more populated zone and then you the player have the option to choose mm -hmm. yeah um but well, it's can't you also switch servers content, in that way so everything's synced to the zone mm -hmm. so like anytime you go into the zone xp has a value like everything is like there's a reason to be there even at, at level cap you, because people can still paragon level past whatever so when right. you're playing that game, it's it, there is a value in playing with other people because everything is really driven around their their fates kind of thing. So there, if we're, you know, you want to be playing with other people, so it kind of does that for you. But can you switch servers like with a click of a button if you have a friend on that server? You just yeah, you click can, them you and you ghost. hop over. Yeah, you can ghost or yeah. you can permanently transfer. So the, the technology, the code is is there. Mm -hmm. Do it. <laughs> 
But how much so, spaghetti code of 1.0 are we running on? Yeah. Like how much spaghetti? Code if you have servers, do you lose on? your house? That sort of crap. <laughs> 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 Uh, F housing, dude. Like, <laughs> delete it. I and love like, housing. I know, and I love that it has glamour and it has housing. But I, it, I, Just... and we're gonna be on a, a fan fest, mm -hmm. and you're gonna. I don't swear. I don't like to swear. I like to. I used to have a problem with it. So I, it's like an alcoholic. I'm I don't sorry. Like, you know, I try not to, to, to back in it. You will hear me audibly curse if we get up there with the Q and A, and it's like housing glamour. Can I bunny oh, this? Oh, it's gonna be. Just get oh, ready for dear. it now. Just get oh, ready for dear. it now. I promise it won't be from me. Like, no. He, he's well, the guy who bathed the game. Tell him what you want. Don't you like, you could ask for anything. This isn't a Q&A. This is a request session. Mm -hmm. Tell him what it is. Couldn't you, in theory, solve some of that problem by making, uh, instead of housing plots, individual houses instanced, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Yeah. Or yes. gardening in, in your apartment. Yeah. If apartments are instance. Just give them the ability to plant some gardens and then you have every possible feature that you could Right. Put. Instead of yeah. instead of zoning into a zone, you zone directly into your front yard and then boom, you're done. And I, and I think what a part concept. of that is they they had this idea of a con and it's a great concept in concept, right? It's <laughs> yeah, the idea of neighborhoods. And we saw this back in like one of the first Starlight celebrations, right? Like people had to put trees on their lawns and you could interact with them for the the quest or for, yeah. for that event. And mm -hmm. that was really cool. Uh, and then they never did anything like that ever again. Because people complained. Often, now, like, that's, that thing is, like, it's not like I'm in my neighborhood and I'm seeing my neighbors. I'm seeing my yeah. neighbor's house. And, yeah, I can right. go visit housing. But back to the whole thing that we've just kind of, like, I, I like I like to play the game. I like to interact with people. One of the coolest things they did was the 2.0 feature. Whenever you see your friends, like, people are on your friends list, their name tags are different. You can see them out in the open world. And you're like, hey, buddy. I, oh, cool. Let's go do so. It, it, it leads you to like maybe even sure. going and running content together because it's like, oh, I didn't know you were online because it doesn't notify me when my friends come online. It's going right. to turn out they that just... this big thing they've been working on this whole time, Brian, is trying to get everybody to interact more. Housing will be instanced. We'll be able to just hop servers on a dime. All the stuff you're asking for right now. That's what they're working on. I mean, well, hopefully. That's, I mean, that ties into what we're, you know, not going to talk about in the MSQ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But one of my, going going back to instant stuff in Eureka, oh. I think one of the biggest issues with that content is the timer. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you don't also, need a timer yeah, if it's not instanced. Right. And you, you get to a point, too, where new people can't come in. So you'll get to a point where you have a whole zone of people trying to pop certain NMs. And then people just start leaving. They're either timing out or they're just leaving and nobody knew was coming in. And so you get to a point where there's 30 people left and everybody's like, well, this is a dead instance and they all leave. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But that yeah. like uh, the two, like the two things as a gamer and a dad that I need for Eureka to actually be relevant. And they fix this in, in 11. That's what actually brought me back to 11 level sync. And then the other one is like, can I invite my friends into the instance? Like, oh, no, let's not, not make it instance anymore. But the only, they have to have that because if you made Eureka by server, it's dead content on day one. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I think I've been I've been playing a lot of Elder Scrolls Online, and nice. the thing that nice. continually surprises me about that game and impresses me about that game is how much it scales, mm -hmm. how yeah. drastically. It, you know, you can have a a party with a champion point member 670 and, uh, you know, paired with a level 20 player. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, that, that level 670 dude is going to do a lot of damage or whatever, but it doesn't feel like he's, like, owning the inst instance, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, and, and as a level 20, you don't feel like you're not putting in work, right? Like, it actually makes it feel like a very cohesive experience among that range of levels and yeah. as someone who's been playing mmos for a long time i didn't think that that was possible um <laughs> yeah. and and they've they've totally made it possible and uh it and wasn't that way at launch it wasn't like that way no, no, no you're right, right. The, it was yeah, one that's that's what, we actually went and did eso and got our whole group got separated because some people hit cap and then it's like well we're still leveling it up and now that like every time I've gone in, my brother's like, you know, he's a cap. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm the level twenty guy, and he yeah. spends all his time there. It, exactly, and and I had I had helped beta test it, and uh, when I had beta tested it, I didn't like the way 
that the zones were uh, fragmented by level, right. which is something that you see in a lot of MMOs, right? And something that FF14 does a lot of. And when they did Tamriel Unbound, it was sort of like they were like, how can we make it so that someone can start in any zone, work through the quests, and still be able to get something out of it, XP, coin, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they figured out the balance to make that work. And they completely did away with the idea that, hey, this zone is from 1 to 14. This zone is from 12 to, you know, whatever. They got rid of that concept altogether, and it freed up the entire game and the populace of the game to start and play wherever the fuck they want. And I <laughs> love that. Like, yeah. it's, it's one of the things, it's one of the experiences about ESO that I've continued to like, and the and I know that if I bring somebody in and they're like, "Hey, want to grind, you know, grind some dungeons?" Doesn't matter what my level is, doesn't matter what their level is, we can do that content together. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of level sync. I think that was a original uh, solution that Eleven brought in originally. Like it was like it was foreign at the time, and it brought it in, and all of a sudden, as a player, it didn't matter if I could play less or more, we could still group together. And because right. you had the merit point system, and I'm not advocating for a true like the, like a one to one merit with 14, there was value in you being a cap and, and and coming and playing. No, but what that did though is is something that that you were talking about earlier is that it still made XP have value, value. beyond your level cap. Yeah, and that's the biggest problem that I see with FF14 right now is that there's none of that, right? Like there's Eureka, you have a a, a completely separated leveling process. You know, you've got Heaven on High, which will give you a fast forward in your normal leveling. But mm -hmm. there's no additional reason beyond hitting that level cap to continue getting or trying to acquire XP. And, and still so, so much stuff gives you XP. Which exactly. Is, That's you know, like 60% of the game that is like no more, uh, no longer applicable to you. Even the challenge log, you're like at cap. You're like, here's zero and then Gil. Like, I need none of this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly and i do and and you know again elder scrolls online has that champion point system which when i exp when i got to that i was like oh this is merits this is merit points from 11 it, which is essentially what it is so many games have that end game progression system that for 14 not to have it seems like a really big oversight Mm -hmm. And even if it like, and the thing is that well, I've even thought of, of putting thought in it, even if it wasn't related to how you performed in battle, like people will talk about like, oh, it'd be great if you could like carry more poetics. Well, why not? Every time I hit a new level that I can, I can choose to increase my poetics count, or I can totally. choose, choose to reduce my teleport count or my movement. Like there is so much quality of life that if you want to invest that time in the game and make XP worth something, that they all of a sudden it's like yeah what like, do you need to hold more poetics for what do you even need poetics for well and that's okay. the other thing is that poetics needs to be able to translate into uh the new tomes it, it, and, I, and i'm never calling that the most efficient way to do end game would be poetics but at the end of the day the fact that they're it, it's like i've got nothing below like 60 like it's a completely worthless currency for me people are like you could sell it for gil like i have no need for gil in this game uh you know it's like there is like there there i keep getting more and more de-incentivized as a part of it but if let's say 2000 poetics turned into 200 mendacity right now like thank you i'll take that i it has some form of you know value and then we we devalue so much stuff so quickly um yeah so, anyway i'm with i'm with yeah me. so back to this the past well, <laughs> if uh just like as a plug really quick for brian yeah. if, if if uh you guys listening are on board with everything that's been talked about brian is all over the forums with mm -hmm. posts I, like I, this. I post a video and yeah. the, and the thing that I like, hey, do this. Support with. him. Support and him. And maybe point, we can dream, get some like of this I happening. This on one podcast is to be in the interview and be like, yo, Square, if if <laughs> with all respect, here's a design document for it, and it's and it's all focused in on what they've already built and just freaking connecting the dots. Like just connect this system to this. Like why can't I level up Eureka by running a roulette? Now I should have a choice. Like now again, not efficient. It doesn't need to be number one. But it's like if all I can do as a as a dad right now is run a, a daily roulette, and it's like, well, do I want XP or do I want EXP? I don't, let me just pick that, you know, if I if I choose. But anyway, thank you for the plug. Because uh, <laughs> somebody's like, you need to post this these days. I'm, the I'm like, I am there fighting glamour Done. Nazi. Done. Join time. him. Support the cause. 
So yeah. we've actually Better. been through uh, like two and a half of our many points. So let's keep going. Right, uh, Doman Enclave. <laughs> do we do we talk about Omega? Like kind of. It, it's new. Um, I guess we don't want to talk like about the bosses because it's spoiling. We don't want to spoil. I don't anything. think the bosses are spoiling. Who are you gonna fight in the raid <laughs> of Omega? Oh, guys, we're totally fighting the chicken. I, mean, I guarantee it. Clearly, clearly, we're going back and we're fighting uh, Gilgamesh. It was a little and, fun uh, uh, teasing and, people uh, for the last boss because yeah. they're like, they're like, Omega's the third boss. What's the last boss? I'm like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I thought the, the, the fights, I they were. I enjoyed the music. I like, I enjoyed okay. the fights. I don't see it as something that I'm going to enjoy that here in a couple of weeks. You know, it's like after you've done it yeah. you know, six or seven times and you've gotten your loot and you're like, all right. I do the baby mode <laughs> twice and then I don't again. And then there was, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw it for uh, AV or AO, um, OA, OA, whatever, I'm... the third fight in, mm -hmm. in this okay. fight only. Um, yeah. Some people have been having issues with the bright flashy lights. Yes. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. From a, so from that a, is something like seizures. seizures. Yeah. Oh, wow. turn, turn your animations off. Um, maybe just stay away from that fight if, if you can for right now. Um, obviously, I mean, there's there's threads all over the place talking about this. Hmm. Um, Don't hurt yourself. I would yourself. assume Square Enix being Square Enix. I mean, they, they've been doing a lot of, like, really cool accessibility kind of stuff. Yeah, they've this got, they, they um, do I would assume they would nice. get on this. Yeah, yeah. so um, keep an eye out for, for that kind of stuff. Um, Domen Enclave. Yeah. Domen Enclave. If you, you haven't been to the Dumb Enclave, but it's, it's really uh, cool. They actually, yeah. They, there's a bridge now. There's a whole new section. Mm -hmm. If you if you us. remember how it originally looked and how like the first section looks now, it, it's a it's a big jump. It looks really cool. If you look at the bones of what's now, you can imagine that the last stage of what we're gonna have be a lot now. More it's gonna there, be yeah. great. It's or gonna I be really it's cool great. looking. Like, where? Well, originally, yeah. area, you can make a few things. Now there's like a whole other like area. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when we went into Stormblood, we were all, because I, I think as much as we just complained about it, like, the, I think the expansion launched beautifully uh, outside of, like, the uh, people trying to hack the system Rob and on. bring it down. <laughs> but that's, that's uh, you know, DDoS. But mm -hmm. the outside of that, like, but, like, we were like, what's the city we're building? Because every time we've built up something. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this, the interesting twist here, though, for the Dumb and is it. we actually feel like we're participating in the restoration as opposed to, and there's another patch, and now it's bigger, and you know, and this is prepared, and now these features are here. I, I love this, and I think it's a great way to do it. And uh, you know, I was yeah, on, on, on the other week talking with with Happy, and and he thought I was crazy, but I love the idea of just <laughs> giving the money and then like watching them like make paper. Like it seems like the stupidest thing, but you know, you give them the money, they build these facilities, and then there's this cutscene. They're like making paper, and they're you know doing lanterns and stuff. Like that's really cool to me. I think that's really cool. Um, I don't know if I'll be as excited about helping with rice patties in the first part of this. I think uh, we're supposed to be doing like some schools at some point too uh, with with this uh, update for for Dome and Enclave. But yeah, I love I love the system and it's a great way to just get rid of your NPC garbage. Plus, they uh, boost they boost the uh, percentage that they pay out to you. So if something that is a thousand gil, they'll give you like a thousand eight hundred gil for. And, and it works percentage. perfectly. As much as I'll rag on Eureka, all that crap you get from the the lock boxes, just take You're it right to. over to the NPC. Yeah. They need to put the Eureka dude like next to the basket. Just that would click, be click, very click, helpful. Click, click, click. Yeah. They just need to add those drop boxes to the fates out in the open world. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you can uh, now if you uh, raise Zoe Aliopa's satisfaction level to max, you can cast glamours on her. If you're into that, that's, that's still weird to me. Like, wh yeah. why you want to change the, the chick's clothes? It's strange. It's weird. No judgment. I'm judging. I'm sorry. It's weird. Give her the give her the snowman outfit, right? You could do Never. that. That'd be pretty funny. Snow, right? She runs an orphanage, right? You need I've to make been, the orphanage yeah. fun for the kids. Mm, sure, I've been sure. playing. I've been playing this game for what, like eight years now, and uh, <laughs> and I just glamoured a few things, and I did my first die. Um, uh, at, what? At our event, yeah. Like I wow. do not like. That's how much I. Like, wow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I made my original fortune on Glamour Prisms. Just putting that out there. <laughs> oh, I made money off of it. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, nah, I don't care. 
you know, like I don't sit here. I'm like, oh, what should I wear today? Mm. No, I, I suck at that in real life too. Thank God I'm married. Oh, <laughs> Brian, you're going to meet somebody for business. Dress nice. Okay, good idea. Nice. Uh, bonding ceremonies. Now you can celebrate your anniversaries of your uh, eternal bonding. Uh, there's new chapel decorations. Uh, new ceremony favors have been added, um, and there's a new gift for guests as I'm well. I'm so surprised they didn't make us pay for this. I thought no, this was yeah. going to be a cash shop. They I thought this was going to be a for it, and we're still if paying you, for if it. If you want to like upgrade the tier of your your first bonding, if you want to like get that other premium package, yeah, you can still pay for it. <laughs> you can, yeah. Um, but there you go. Um, so there's the new uh, shifting altars of Usner. I haven't tried this yet. Um, I do. I do want to get good. into this. That's a good. All right, Bryn, Bryn, give us the give us the rundown. I absolutely. Uh, Usner and, and even back when it was the uh, whatever, I forgot what it was in uh, in Heaven's Word now because I've just done uh, Usner. I love it because it's content that is different every time I engage with it. It becomes there's almost a religious or a superstition kind of that can kind of build up between kind of how you play it. And so this one's the whole like roulette wheel. Essentially, this mm. gets re like, this really makes me like, man, I want that boss rush mode. Just give me a mode in which that it just throws me boss after boss, and then I go until I die. Um, and that's kind of what this is. So it, you you roll randomly, and um, and then just like with uh, just like the you know, I guess the uh, the ones of which that you're in the dungeon, you can canals. even get uh, yeah the canals. You can even get um, uh, Admos. Uh, and uh, and be saved. So it's like that's he spits like, that's you a, out. It's so funny. Well, he gets hit by lightning, and then he's like, "Oh my gosh!" You know, um, my bad. And so, but it's that, uh, and there's so much like random that can happen, and so you have to adjust to the situation. And it's also very rewarding. And I love personally that every time they've made a, a, an item level adjustment to this game, they've brought that into this system. So it's okay now. All of it is at the minimum 270. So that there, you do feel like it's, there can be a challenge. You're not sitting here like just cakewalking through it, and then they throw so much loot at you and rewards that it, that it is very uh, uh, you know interesting. The downside again is that uh, we were running it, and it's like yeah, you got to find people that are on your server, and I'm and I'm just like man, it would be so cool if we could all just do this together. And that's yeah. where that's where like again like that brings up the point we've already beat to the you know beaten to the ground, but. Um, this is something like what we talk about, like Omega, and it's like, oh, I enjoyed Omega. Um, I'm going to do, like, I'll, I, I have nothing to do in game, but what will I do? I'll do maps until I get, you know, in, in, until, you know, 4.5. Um, I'll do, Omega, I'll make sure I do Omega on Tuesday, and that's just, like, Omega is kind of what I feel is more throwaway content for me. Air is something that is at least interesting because you can go in, you can laugh, you can have a good time, and they'll throw stuff at you, and they will kill you, and then at the same time, they'll throw like all of a sudden the, the levels filled with just you're like, oh, what Money. is happening? <laughs> what is happening? You're like, are you seeing this? It makes perfect for live stream. Like it is, it is content that uh, is I, I put it right up there with ultimate. Like I, I would be surprised. Like if people, if anybody's streaming, I would say it's that good. I the think thing I really, the thing I, I really like about it's it, it, two things. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I don't like canals so much because it's like pick a door you picked wrong sucka get out this is like yeah. hit a button good luck sorry you rolled wrong it's like i feel like it's not my fault <laughs> the other thing is well, the other yeah. thing is um when you open a map you get either or canals or the roulette thing and it right. breaks up the freaking monotony of doing canals over and over and over Agreed. again Agreed. it was it's it's boring. It is freaking mm. boring. It makes you fall asleep. I honestly, for the longest time, I would get drunk and do it with my friends, and just that's the only my, way I could do maps. My which only is complaint sad. is that they, they cap you at five rolls, uh, in it. And my thought is, like, I've never sure. gotten five rolls. We always we've get gotten, to four. We've four multiple times. Yeah, we always uh, get to we, four, we, and then uh, Tomo's spits us out. Now the real kicker here, guys. So this, like, again, like, it could go a thousand different ways. The exclamation mark is a multiplier on your rewards. But mm -hmm. then once you get it, it goes and continues on. So then it's only options are getting kicked out or multiplier. So, and the multiplier is a, a bigger fight, a, big, a bigger boss, an elder yeah. summon essentially. So it just keeps stacking and stacking. And like you get, and that's if you get it, like, and you're never guaranteed. The elephant just, I don't know if it's going to do anything different at any point. Spawn this cute little elephant. I'm like, do we kill it? Like, it looks. So cute, darling. Right? And then he's like, "Did you come here for treasure?" We're like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Here, have a ton of treasure." And he just get, you know, just like <laughs> dawns like, "Oh, here's a ten million dollar, you know, uh, ten million deal minion. 
good luck. <laughs> you know, it's just like, thank Jeez. you, buddy. Um, this totally paid for my evening. I think that you know? the, the elephant actually does always spawn. Like, if you look through the patch okay. notes, uh, the I little figured symbol, it did, but it was just like... He's like Prince of Uznir or yeah, something like that. Exactly. Yeah, he's got a name. I forget what it is. So it, it's just, it is it is content that, he's at Batman. least right now, is I feel is more repeatable and uh, because of its uh, variety. I think variety is the spice of life, and we haven't had a lot of it. On the flip yeah. side, if you don't like to do maps, they sell pretty well. They do. And so, like, if yeah. you're gathering and stuff like that, like, uh, with obviously with the interest, the, the, the price of maps is up, is up much higher right now. But mm. um, they, I, I think yeah. they typically, I mean, you can you can make good money um, off of that if, if that's what you're... Go uh, your your inventory. Your roulette. While you're waiting in queue, just go grab one. They're easy to get. Yeah, exactly. That's what Figure we out need, your though. inventory because you're going to get a lot of crap. You need, you need, we need yeah. more stuff to do while we wait in queue. Yeah. <laughs> and I, as somebody uh, who doesn't typically do DPS but is leveling them for the guides and, st and stuff, oh dear lord like oh gosh like what <laughs> to say like okay i can go do this like there's not even battlecraft leaves from 60 to 70 as much as like i'm not advocating for more leaves it'd be so much easier if we just had more guild quests on. that we could just queue up and remember guild quests guild quests what's Your that guild hats or guild hats. whatever the hell yeah. i don't even remember i've forgotten were, yeah, it's been tests, so long right? yeah. back in the day um all right so uh, we did talk a little bit earlier about how we would like to go back, and there's all these dungeons and stuff that are just kind of sitting there. Well, now we can go back and do Wanderer's Palace hard mode and the vault mm -hmm. with our squadrons. So it's exciting. interesting the, 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 the cadence in which they're reintroducing <laughs> these things, because I was like, oh, it's no, nope, that's thrown in the vault there. Okay. Not interesting. Vault still makes zero sense from a, from a lore perspective. Like, all these dungeons, sure, you go back, you're killing monsters and training, you know, whatever. The vault you just like you grab your your npc squad and you're like all right who wants to kill some priests like what <laughs> that doesn't make any sense um but yeah i like the vault though unlock... i, I like I the, vault, the vault yeah, yeah but going back to it seems really weird i guess um but anyway um you can get uh your new grand company rank you can go up to captain uh you'll be able to hold ninety thousand seals if you do that it, um, what's that so... tied behind because i to, can't see to do up. it you need to have done five individual dungeons with your squadron. Okay, so you, thank you. It's not, it's not yeah. five dungeons, it's five individual dungeons. I've had thank to explain you. to this to like two or three people, and they've been very disappointed afterwards because they've run the dungeons, like one same dungeon yeah. over and over again. I'm like, you wasted your time, buddy. Yeah, so, thank well, you. I, yeah. That's where I was like, I know there's something I'm going to ask the guys and see if they know. Yeah. And thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Because I was it, like, well, it's, it's not the let five me apply. dungeons, and then they give you a flagged mission, and then you just send your squad out on it. And okay. when they come back, they're like, "Congratulations, you're awesome. You're a captain. Have fun." That's it. <laughs> here's here's my thing. They're like, "Hey, would you like to be a captain?" It's like, um, "Am I not already?" No. If you take a group of oh, excuse me, hold on, just give me a minute. Um, I just helped liberate two nations. Yeah. That that's not enough. Now I got to go babysit these people. You We're not sure it's level. stuck yet. Just some, go babysit uh, these guys. They're like, yes, and we can also offer you a fantastic uh, array of I-55 gear <laughs> for your trouble. When I was looking at that, I was so disappointed. Like, two of the things look kind of cool, and all of it is useless. Yeah. I just, I don't know. Squadron, the squadron NPC thing, like, could have been cool. It's just, eh. I, don't I know. mean, for not new people, thing. I bet it is good. I bet absolutely 100% new people are like, oh, this is great. If I have to wait in queue, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. But I don't care. All of my jobs are no. 70. I'm never going to do this. I don't care. Yeah, I, I don't uh, have any reason to check it out. Mm. Right. Um, new craftable items. Uh, the company workshop, you get that Otter House skin. Uh, new voyage destinations have been added for your submarines. Uh, submarine why are they still doing that? Like, why are they still doing that feature? I, I, I understood it when it was kind of connected to Diadem. But now that it's been completely disconnected from any outside event, it's, it's a retainer venture. It's what? just it's yeah, elaborate. That's so all it why? is. Just, to yeah. what end? Like, a more gill? I, okay, yeah. Cool, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Whatever. There's a my, my a couple of housing of items, people, items I just, and that's I pretty much it. Take care of all that stuff, and so it's just little bits of income for me. Well, Whatever. Certain things you can only get from it. So they're that's pretty. True. They're pretty. If you want the item, then no, that's the only they, way to get I'm, it. I'm with Most Nate 100% on it, because it's like, it, I like the concept of how it related to the diadem, but they let that just die, and yeah. then it's like, okay, well, is it going to relate to Eureka in any way? No. Okay. That'll be Sucks. that'll be the stage at FanFest. We're closing diadem. 
But the item, we tried. I, I, the, there's it something I liked good. about it. We that tried it, again. Same it thing still with wasn't great. We're just, well, same thing with Eureka. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, why can't I just go into the zone? Like, or why can't that, you know, the, the concept they have with the fates and the and different levels of monsters, I thought was fascinating. I thought it was interesting. And it was rewarding because fates dropped these little lock boxes that you could just roll for stuff. And it's like, why why isn't that everywhere? But anyway. Uh, new housing furniture furniture items have been added. Um, Nanakins. All right, I need to take a minute here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't messed with it. I'm so, going to go get a drink. See ya. <laughs> Each of us has the thing we rant about. So mannequins. People have been wanting mannequins for a while. We have just they? want to be able to display gear. That's all we want to do. Square Enix is like, you know, we should make this needlessly complicated. <laughs> so you have to tie it to a retainer. You can sell bundles of equipment from it, but people have to go to your house. And this doesn't make any sense. I, I set up my first mannequin uh, a couple days ago. And I want to put stuff on it. If you choose to, even if you're not selling stuff on the mannequin, if you just want to display gear on it, each piece of gear takes one of those 20 slots you have to sell stuff. If your oh retainer is selling 20 things, you can't put, you cannot display gear on the mannequin. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing. PS3 limitations? <laughs> not anymore. It can't be anymore. <laughs> I just, I, it's so stupid. I don't know why they decided they had to add all this extra crap onto the mannequins. All we wanted to do was display gear. Nobody's going to like be shopping the market board. Oh, I like this set of gear. Let me send this person a tell and find their house and buy it from them. That's stupid. So they can't why buy the sets off the market board? No, you have to go. You have to send. You can see the player that listed it. You have to send them a tell, find out where their house is, go to the house, find the mannequin. I thought it was supposed to tell you. Like I thought you were supposed to be able to teleport to it or whatever. Like I, I, I thought. Well, maybe I'm, I'm maybe wrong. you can. I, that was that was how I I read it. Was it. Like because agreed. Like you, you're, you're, regardless, you're this is not a feature forward. we needed on our mannequin. It does sound like 1.0 marketplace. Yeah. Right? Bring it back, man. It was so successful. Yeah, and then you have to select a job for the mannequin because God forbid you mix and match job gear. Like, it's just... <sighs> you had one job, Square. Just let us display our armor and a weapon on a mannequin. I think that's and still then, a, a 1.0 spaghetti code limitation. You know? uh, it's stupid is what it... I don't know what, what the deal is. They It's 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 stupid. Classes are like dead. Do jobs. Let everybody... Like, let let you equip different weapons and let's all make it about the job stone. Simple as that. The I best like part that. about mannequins is that you can get them from NPCs. You don't have to worry about the market board, and that's it. Yeah, they're not like crazy, stupid, expensive. You don't have to do BCNMs to collect each piece of the mannequin <laughs> to put. <together. laughs> but once you that's get it, nice. you're like, Ugh. yeah. It's just man. It was so easy to do, and yet they just they messed it up. Uh, estate tags, if you want to. A nice tags feature in. for role playing. Yeah, if you're, like, if you're into that like and the idea that. of like neighborhoods or something, you can do that. Uh, newer Kester Green rolls have been added, um, which reminds me, they did announce the in-game items that will be coming with the uh, five-year anniversary like best of album that they announced. Um, we'll be getting orchestrian rolls for the Shinryu and uh, Sukomi fights in uh, like an 8-bit style. Hmm. So we'll be getting we'll be getting that stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's see. A new seed for flower pots. Nobody cares. Um, I do. Okay. She's trolling. She's trolling. She can't even hold it. Uh, the the new gate leap of faith has been added to gold saucer. If you like jump puzzles, I don't. Uh, it's a lot I, of MGP though. It was it was great watching Yoshida do this during their fourteen hour live stream because he got. I don't know how far he got up overall, right? But he gets up there and then he falls and he just kind of has this look on his face. I'm like, that's exactly how I feel about jump puzzles. <laughs> now you know how we feel. Um, He's a real human being. <laughs> um, they've adjusted uh, MGP rewards just kind of all over the place, probably to help kind of even it out with uh, the the higher amounts that you're getting from some of the new stuff. Like fashion report, MGP reward was crazy um, compared mm -hmm. to everything else. So uh, raise the, the payout on a lot of other stuff as well. Um, we have drums now for performance actions. If you want to, you know, if you wanted a timpani or a bongo or cymbals, now you can. I got faked out by drums already. Like I was listening to to some new music somewhere. Don't remember where. Somebody whipped out the bongos and was playing them, and I'm like, that doesn't sound. This music doesn't sound like it ought to have bongos. 
locate person with bo- oh, okay never mind sorry <laughs> it just uh, faked me out if, if they yeah. introduce hacky sacks i'm gonna be back in college oh god yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think hacky sack is a musical instrument so it i think uh, people you with and, no. like kick hacky around sack like... pet you can kick to each other exactly yeah, yeah. If, uh, if you're one of those people that uh, has registered the Final Fantasy XIV Companion app on your phone, you can now type in slash Tombstone. Look how angry you are. I hate, uh. this. <laughs> I hate this. This is so dumb. It's, it's pretty it's dumb. Not Such only is it a dumb, waste of but it's like, money. I haven't even touched the app since I since I did register it. It's Such just like a it's, waste. It's terrible. Don't buy it. Certainly not. Right. Well, hey, don't do that. But it's that when they when they said there's a premium plan, I was like, oh, gosh. But then. Like, I uh, completely misunderstood what they were going for. I thought I was going to be able to, like, oh, Link Shell's talking. Let me go ahead and mess with Stammer. Uh, the no. fact that they have a scheduler and it's not in the game, like, I, I need it more in the game. So when people not come in, it's like, hey, by the way, we're going to do maps on Friday. Like, oh, great, you know, nope. And then it's like, it's literally just like, I have Discord. I know how to text people. Uh, why is this even a This has always been the problem with, with Square Enix trying to make these kind of systems. It's that people that are doing that kind of stuff already have a system to do it mm-hmm. um and so they're not going to move over to whatever square does because chances are it's not going to be that great discord um, integration like apis exist and we've talked about add-ons and we uh, to the point where we yeah. eventually gave up on them because it's like you know you can only be told they're coming though, so though i think we, we, we do have a, a hint of that we'll we'll, we'll touch on here okay. shortly um cool. but yeah, yeah let's get me off the app because i, I, I can remember pissed off about as soon as they announced the the, the new lodestone they're like yeah we're gonna have like forums for free companies and schedulers and stuff i'm like okay by this point 1.0 had been out for years anybody that's doing that stuff is already using something else nobody's gonna move to this system um you have to make it better to make it to make the sell you have to make it yeah like put in a little effort like i mean obviously right people work to make the the companion app right because it's been in in the works (laughs) I'm trying to be nice about it, but like, I, Lark, it's, yeah. it's garbage. The There's one useful no thing reason. about the companion app is that if you go to each of your retainers and uh, bring them down, look at what's on them, put them back up, it actually will refresh their timer in game. So if you're on vacation or something, you can keep your retainers up. And that's the, it. The whole the mm-hmm. redeeming thing that I was hoping for, because I was like, oh, okay, I can't talk with my free company, I can't talk with Link Shells. Oh, maybe this will be easy and it's not it's slow like it's mm-hmm. not like if it was fast like oh bop, bop, bop. Yeah. man that's so easy no it's like it's actually for me like i, I get the whole vacation piece mm-hmm. yes there you go that's the only that's thing because it. it's like oh guess what like i'm with, like with fusion i work from home you know what's easy just to log into the game do what i needed to do with my retainers and you can log out. in quicker than it takes the app to load it, like yeah, it is faster for me to log in on pc yeah. than this app is so slow and i'm like and i hope maybe they're like oh this is the like the first step of it and they're going to work it out but honestly it's i haven't seen that it's like i've been long calling eureka the uh kind of the public test realm or the or the relic test realm it's like they're throwing stuff in there they're experimenting are there are we going to see the fruition of it and the, the companion we, app has a long way to go before yeah. it actually made, like has any value you and remember then, then, when ahead. uh when it was coming out yeah the, there was a little note that was uh coupon nuts were going to be capped the cap is two at two two, two. <laughs> you don't get you don't even get like five you get two and like, then if you, and if you, you get if you log in and, then, and you don't immediately hit a button to go check stuff and like spend a coupon nut you waste one if you're already mm-hmm. capped and so, you if you pay the premium monthly fee, don't you get 10 and if you don't want to be capped at 10 you can just throw them money and they and you can buy any number of coins why is it capped at all if you're giving them money exactly mm. don't give them money and, and you know we as, as we're ragging on all this stuff like you know the app and, and eureka and stuff uh, experimentation is good right i agree, they're, they're not, I, I agree they're, they're with not, that. not exper- like all this stuff is they're, they're testing the waters. They need right? to take risks. What they're doing it with it, though, is they're just showing... That they don't know what they're a, doing. A crazy or care about us. While doing this experimental content. My, my theory is that Yoshi P is too effing busy. <laughs> he has been promoted, and he's over the whole freaking uh, Group 5 division. Yeah. 
and yep. like your rants that you posted uh you know your opinion pieces on the on the site talking about like the uh the scar oh, don't even get started on I know, way, I, but it's important scar. because it's that is he too busy like, fusion yeah, gets he's so passionate about director. this shit. well and, and here's, like, and here's the thing right are they working him too hard to wear things you know he can't see everything he's got to delegate you're gonna no, die and I, and I totally agree with that right like even yeah. even back in we, we were talking about fashion report and he's like you know i can't oversee every minute detail mm -hmm. and i and i get that um but when there's multiple times where they you know i'm going to talk about it. the scarf of wondrous wit we already had the crap with the white ravens yoshida came out apologized he said we'll learn from this literally a week later two weeks later didn't learn hey, from this, it. the scarf that that has always been uh, for contests we literally just the same day on the lodestone you have the announcement for winners for a contest. One of the selectable prizes for those people was the scarf. Mm -hmm. That same day, the last post is, hey, you can buy this for 50 gil next week. What the hell? Yeah. Nobody caught this anywhere and said, people might have an issue with this. Nobody? I get that Yoshida can't look at everything, but Yoshida's not the only person working over there. There's yeah. PR, there's community, there's the other devs, there's the people making the NPCs. Nobody caught this. Right. Do not try and play devil's advocate cares. with Fusion on this. He will punch you through the it's internet. It's stupid. It is stupid. I don't think, I, I honestly, I don't think anyone cares enough anymore that that they're not, they're clearly not thinking about what these items mean. They're, they're much more distant from the emotional connection. And they admitted as much when they had said, uh, you know, apologized for the White Raven yeah. earrings. And then to, to, to turn around and just a week later, do that with the scarf. It's like, you guys don't understand how you're rewarding your audience. You guys don't understand that having a, a, an exclusive item that other people don't have gives you some kind of status, or at least it should in theory. Yeah. And and that's that's been part of my problem with with FF14. You talked about gear lust on your podcast numerous totally. times. Totally. There's yeah. nothing if 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 everyone can have access to everything, if it's so ubiquitous that you could just pay 50 gil and hey, it's yours cuz you feel like you're missing out on it, then you know, like is there a difference between paying the 50 gil or winning a contest? There's really not. Like at the end of the day, somebody who walks past you and sees you with that item is not going to go, oh, hey, that person must be a creative person or they won a contest. They go, oh, that person paid 50 gil. What do you fucking yeah. do? Yeah. <laughs> well, and the best part, too, is those white ravens, they're still stored in your armoire under the exclusives tab. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Um, it's, it's tone deaf. It's tone deaf to one of the problems that that the community has openly said has been a problem for years and that's been motivation how you're trying to motivate your player mm -hmm. the the idea that everything can be ubiquitous and that we all yeah. hold hands and sing kumbaya at the end of the day is is just not true it, it's and i mean yeah you can make a game where you do that but it's a fucking boring game that's the problem is that it's horrendously boring and you will drive the people who have been playing the longest Elsewhere. out. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And and that's that's at odds with what we've seen with the way that people treat MMOs or or have a relationship with MMOs. People want when they when they buy an MMO, they want that to be a you know, several year commitment. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I know it's turned into now like, oh, my friends are playing this game. I've got to play it, too. But uh, somewhere along the line, MMO developers have lost sight of of what the appeal of playing an MMO is. And that may be a side effect of just all games going multiplayer, all games going online or having some kind of online component. Now it's just expected to kind of come along with the product. But I, I just don't know that that expectation is is fair. And I think that it's done a lot to hurt the genre. Mm -hmm. I, think I think there's like, go ahead, go ahead. Earlier, earlier too, how they are, they're focusing on new players and not retainment. And that's that's tied into all this stuff, making these items available. Cause oh, yep. all these new people, they never had not access to or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, there's a value in getting new players. Like I, I think that essentially, I've always kind of thought the idea of the 
the casual and the hardcore player being at odds is a silly concept because the hardcore player needs the casual player to fund the game and the yeah. casual player needs the hardcore player to give them a goal. Yep. You know, and so it's like they're not like it's a it, there's a really good relationship between it. It's always that's why it's always funny when it's like filthy casuals or stupid hardcore. It's like guys, like at the end of the day, like it, this, this is a, a mutually beneficial relationship. There's you know more of you guys, and so that there's a strength in new players. But but everything we're kind of hitting on what what Nate has talked about is there is the sense, and that's where I haven't lost hope. It is shifted to the the concept of looking at the future, going. Are they investing in the in the franchise? Are they investing in the game? And I think they are. I think from some of the numbers that we've seen, like I hopefully it's not all investing in marketing because then at the end of the day, it's just like, oh, bummer. Um, but I think that they're building something and I'm hoping that it's something big. From the lore perspective, you know, like we know something big has to happen in order to face the big bag in Zodiac arc. And if that's a spoiler, suck it. Uh, <laughs> like pay attention to the story. He's Best all over. Best patches ago. Yeah, you know, he, he's all over <laughs> Um, you know, so it's like, are we like, if we're building to that, that in and of itself is exciting that what they, what, what we've seen in the, in this story, what we've, where we've seen the story go is that there was, I felt like a just total dip in interest up until the end of 4.3. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm fine. All right. We're getting back to the good stuff. All right. Yeah. Let's figure this out. Um, yeah, I, I don't want them to stop bringing in new players. New players are a great lifeblood of the game. And plus they're coming into a huge amount of content that we have to also not forget the people who made it happen. And I'm not saying this is a 1.0 legacy player. I'm saying this is somebody who wants a reason to go and log into the game, and the game is not giving me that reason. Other games are, and it's okay to take breaks. I've always I advocated for that. Like, if you're not having fun, go play something else. Well, guess what? Mega Man's just around the corner. Guess what? You know, like, uh, you know, Soul Calibur. Like, there's plenty of things. Pokemon, there's lots of things coming out that we can occupy ourselves with, but all in all, like when we just ran down this list, this is one of the like out, outside of the story. This is, I think, one of the weakest numbered patches that we've received this game, this mm -hmm. this expansion cycle. There's well, yeah, I mean, if, if you if you look at the notes for three point four, they're virtually you, the same patch notes. They're well, virtually the yeah. exact. We we got basically the same shit that we got in mm -hmm. three point four. And for me, that's completely inexcusable as an MMO developer. We got less. We, yes. we got less, Nate. Yes. We, did it. we got the, the Wondrous Tales in 3-4. And that right. was huge. Like, I was and like, was everything, yeah. everything had flavor again. There was a right. there was a reason for, like, oh, if I'm running this old content, there's still a chance to be able to progress. But you, you, you hit on something that I think is really interesting, and that is that, that dichotomy between casual and hardcore players and how you need both. You can't just have one or the other. You really need both. And I think that there was this thing that happened when, you know, after after World of Warcraft had kind of, you know, the, the, the hype track. around that had, had kind of died down a little bit. But there was this friction between the way that hardcore players and casual players would talk to one another and what they s would say or go back to the developer with what they wanted out of the game and the developers looked at this and was like this is this is terrible for community synergy this is really bad we're we're, we're creating a toxic environment that these people are playing in and so they came in and in development ways tried to stem that that disagreement that friction between those two groups and I think that you hit the nail on the head, Bryn, that there needs to be those two groups. One who is providing the economic stability for the franchise or the, the game to be able to be economically viable. And then you need those people who are so dedicated to doing something the game sets out as ridiculous mm -hmm. that they provide motivation for those new players. That has been completely lost and almost like it feels like there has been considerable effort to dev away from that and i think that that may be the biggest mistake that mmos as a genre have made 2010 moving forward mm -hmm. the, the, the best thing the bit the positive side about all of this is that being that it is the mmo one of the th things i've always enjoyed about it is it can change it can it will change there's always there is that sense that things are changing uh, and the hope is, is that they uh, that Square can kind of see that and learn from that. I mean, having no in, uh, insight into their numbers, they could be doing these things, and it says it could be the difference between fifty million dollars a year. And all of a sudden, they're like, "Well, we could do what 
what uh, Nate and Brian and, and, and some of the like more heavier uh, you know players want, but that's going to cost us $50 million a year. And then as a company, they say, no, you know, and I can understand that. Um, my hope is, is that, you know, as they're, as they're kind of seeing this, they're like, okay, well, this works. Uh, and I, I've wanted them to do risks. And the problem is, is that I think the, <laughs> the downside is when they do a risk, uh, diadem and you know i consider eureka a, a risk but a, a risk with still the training wheels on you know they it's they're not landing where you know it, it's it's calculated risk and yeah. and i think that that's part of the reason that 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 content has not been so well received is because they're doing it half-assed they're they're not really putting their the the entirety of their development behind it and and i think that that's a mistake right like i think that if if they if they really committed to it and said we're going to make this work regardless if if we lose players if we lose subscribers we're dedicated to making something new i think that that would impress a whole lot more people i mean think about it like 2.0 got way more people in the door than 1.0 ever did mm -hmm. and what did they say hey we're blowing absolutely everything, everything about up. this game up it is nothing is going to be the same and that's what got more people into the door than your first launch like you can't ignore that and you can't ignore the um it, you know it, could it go badly absolutely mm -hmm. but they can't be gun shy to try new things right i think the problem is uh when they did all those new things in 2.0 and they were like oh this worked let's do it again no don't mm -hmm. do it again we've yeah. seen it we well, liked I, it I, but I, we I, want I, something I, new right. you're absolutely right michelle i you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the other problem that we, that we have with the game you know we talk about how the the patch notes are the same and it's that weird mix of we want that level of consistent update right yes. if you don't have that i mean that's how like old republic right out the door it was months before they had anything new and that killed it right, right. off the bat is their lack of consistent updates we have that with 14 and with stormblood they've been changing a little bit about what's included in those patches and now it doesn't feel like we're quite like you know saying with 4.4 it doesn't feel like there's that much in it um and it's just that that weird balance of and, and you know everybody's going to look at it differently of do we want them to keep that repetition up because if we do they're going to just keep doing they have a pattern like they're just going to follow that they pattern. settled into that that kind of cadence that really some, right some of the but things are good about the repetition mm -hmm. like yeah. like uh the way that they uh like put out the the books and the tomes and how much each tome is like prices for uh tombstones stuff like that where you go mm -hmm. um the selection screens all of that that's, that's fine with me to have it repeated i don't want it to be like a new thing every time where i have to right. figure out sure. okay well this time i have to give three of this to the guy over in zone b or whatever like i don't right. mind that yeah. but build something else that i can spin those things on i guess it's it, we're in a theme park. We should the theme park, uh, the attractions in the theme park should talk to one another. Should there should be like it, you know, you can go in and I can go play this, and then it, you know, they, it's connected, right? I, and the thing is, is that um, there is actually like we we sit on so much content, and that that's so it, you know, I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, like it doesn't feel like it's going to be that much effort to 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 connect these these dots. And like, you know what I'm finding sad. Uh, yeah, wait, what's up? Pagos. Everybody's like, oh, pa Pagos is so bad. Pagos itself is not bad. It's just, we had Eureka, and it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Pagos has, like, two or three extra things, and those things make Pagos better than Eureka. Mm -hmm. But it's the uh, same... Sleeping dragons have to walk by make Pagos absolutely the worst. That's the lazy person in you talking. Fucking walk. No, that, there's no. a dev that's, like, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting. Drop a dragon here to make people walk in timed content i'm gonna make I, people have to slow down okay so the problem there is that it's timed content not that you have to do a little bit something extra to get past a dragon i think it's interesting i think it makes the content a little more scary like we're talking about mm -hmm. uh the outer world it'd be more interesting mm -hmm. if it were a little more yeah. scary eureka yeah. is a little more scary right why is I, there I don't know, I think it's interesting. in the world that can kill me <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, and why, like, it would be, and I get it because you have to, you can't sit here. It's the problem what they did with Bard and, and Heaven's Word. And Heaven's Word, all of a sudden, Bard played at level 52 different than it ever, like, it was like, oh, by the way, now you're this. 
you can't do that. You got to, you have to train people. It's the whole Mario, you know, like, okay, we're going to teach people how to jump and do this right at the beginning. And then we're going to expand on that idea later. Like if they're going to put dangerous monsters in the game, they need to put dangerous monsters in the game throughout the entire it's, you area. Played, you know, you like, played 11. We had to carry potions and stuff around to sneak past stuff, you know? It was way harder than having to just walk past a dragon. And in its way, having that those dragons there makes people interact more. Like, oh, crap, I screwed it up. Can I get a raise? People will stop and help you. I think if they literally use the color scheme, they can, they can easily communicate that something's harder than something else. You know, it's like, oh, by the way, blue fates, you can just kind of like, you can kind of just mash your keyboard and fall asleep and play. Well, you know, uh, it's like fate, you gotta be a, you gotta you gotta pay attention. That's something that like, oh, yeah, we got we gotta pay attention to this. Mechanic. It's like they've said in interviews with about Eureka. It's it's a different system, and so they needed to separate that from the main game. Yeah. Um, but I I think the issue is, I mean, yes, I played eleven ten years ago. Yeah. Did you forget how to use a potion? Did you forget no, how to no, walk? No, no. What I'm saying is that the the landscape of not just MMOs but just gaming in general is it's vastly totally. different. Yeah. Now there's a lot more handholding, and it's it's hard to, especially when there's relics involved, right? Um, before we would just light grind, just queue up for trials or whatever, and just repeatedly do stuff. But now you're introducing relics in Eureka, which is a whole system designed outside of the norm to be more challenging and to you know all this stuff that you normally wouldn't be doing, and that's what they're putting the relics behind. And I just it it bugs me. Well, it'd be great if they also put leveling behind it so that if I wanted to level that way, I could go in and do that. Like, why you know, Why is that a level 70 content that, uh, the, that like, let's say I was trying to, as a game, attract 11 players with, like, hey, we have this, and, it, you know, it's going to, it's dangerous, and et cetera, and you're going to be able to transition. But you got to play three seasons of an MMO RPG story, hit cap, and I then think it's, it's just... <laughs> attracting players, you know, and again, it comes back to getting new players. It's important to attract players. Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, it seems weird to, to fish within Square Enix's own player base already, right? If they're trying to, to get people from 11. But you need to do that without doing it at the expense of your current players. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, and I think that Square Enix's overall approach has been, eh, our players seem like they'll keep playing, maybe. They're, they're, you know, they're like, doing they, that they, streams. It's the, yeah. the new players or the hardcore raiders. So it's like, okay, here's a new UI guide. Um, here's, you know, Ultima Weapon Ultimate. Right. What about the people in the middle? Right. I'm never touching that content. I don't need a UI guide. You cannot. Uh, like, the thing is, I think they spend a lot of time designing these fights, and I love that, and I want them to keep doing that. They have to figure out a way to make the game scale, uh, like Nero was saying, um, as we were going in, like, you know, with the ESO. Um, let me play the dungeon and if I beat it, let the dungeon level up. Like you, that way they're not having to orchestrate all this work because essentially like if we want, if they, let's say they, like, I remember I was listening to LBR like, uh, back as before Stormblood and there was the, they were talking about, um, the concept of another tier of the Omega raid. So there'd be the story mode, there'd be the next level up. And then there'd be the, the, what we have the savage mode right now. And it's like, okay, you're talking about three tiers of the same fights, uh, each one progressively getting bigger. Why not just let the things stick him level up? Like if Omega's level 70, you clear him, give him, let him be level 71 or level 75 or level 80. Like just let, you know, from a stats and a, you know, we've got these logarithmic algorithms for these, where their stats should be. Let us as a player throw ourselves against the content until we can't do it anymore. And we're not all gonna be equal. Like I, me, I consider myself uh, a, a former a hardcore, now casual. Uh, the you know, it's like, why not let me run the dungeons? You know, you scale them up, and every time, like uh, Diablo's torment system, and then I'm gonna find the level that I can hit, that I can run, that's rewarding and fun. But maybe I'm not able to clear the the level above me. But maybe you guys are. Maybe you guys are ten levels above me. But that's great. You're actually being challenged by the same content, but you're at a whole different level. So that that actually then fills that gap between that that level. We've got a very static system. You know very stared you know boom we need to have it we need to have it more um uh, i i would like a system that lets the more casual raiders still see these extra phases that ultimate or that the that'd savage cool. that'd be cool get. like as a casual raider like seeing neo x death i'm like that's super cool i'll never see him that's great 
you know, like, and it's, it's off putting to, to me a little bit, right? Because I can be negative about whatever I want to be, but <laughs> it's, just, it's annoying. Like, it's, it's cool that that's there. And, and I get that it's supposed to be harder, but at the same time, it's like, where's that for us? Like, the, the more casual it's on Twitch. Raiders. It's on Twitch helping the, uh, the hardcores make up. money. Well, yeah. that, it also drives the game up. Like, Ultimate, for the fact that they cut it, is amazing to put Final Fantasy XIV in front of everybody. Whenever, like, when you're sitting here and you're watching all these streamers, 6,000, 10,000 viewers, putting Final Fantasy at the top of, it, like, you was kind of hitting on it, like, uh, earlier. Like, the gaming it's, has changed. Things have driven into multiplayer. Twitch has fundamentally changed how games are made and developed because it's like, how do you get people to, how do you increase the, li the lifehood of your game? And it's, you got to be multiplayer. We've always been that, but, you know, it... <laughs> 14 is like top whenever ultimate comes out because yeah there's there is a value in it and the fact they cut it was like well it wasn't for me but it's for the game overall's health it gives people something to chase and gives somebody something to watch i watched all the ultimate fights i was it was the most entertaining stuff because they you know it's great they don't hold back like they're like this is gonna suck for you are you up for the <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back to the patch notes. Yeah, uh, patch notes. notes. We have, we have uh, Saint Saint. Was it Mo Mo Saint Mo Kane? Mo Mo Mushroom Cocaine. Uh, Mushroom Cocaine. Our freedom hard mode, and we have the burn. Uh, the burn is amazing. I love the yeah. burn. Uh, the music in it's great. I think the setting's great. Uh, the boss, the boss is fantastic. Great. It's a uh, remix of Fractal, right? Not Fractal. Uh, Aetherochemical Research Facility. Is the, that what it was? I, the, I, the, 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 the thematic like, change in the middle of the of the dungeon was really surprising the first time I ran it. I think uh, it's I really. Cool. I think it's my favorite dungeon. The the music in the Arboretum is it's it feels lazy. It's, it's the same like one, a, but it sounds it's like it's tiring. being played it's on one speaker in a dead mall. Outside, <laughs> and it's just like with an so echo. it sounds like. At the same time, like I was listening to it, and I go, "Oh, the the music is actually a mechanic to put me to sleep, so the the, the dungeon wins." <laughs> so the poop monsters <laughs> will kill you. It's supposed to be creepier, but it's like it's not creepier. Everything's just covered in mud. Like it's I, all right, mud's creepy. Sure. <laughs> um, Gooboos can fly now. Yeah, little wavy arms. Uh, Please, animation. if you have a gooboo, fly on it. It's amazing. Little, it's little arms little do like this. With the animation, yeah. It's so uh, funny. Uh, the cavalry Drake can also fly. Uh, the new alarm feature, I forgot about this. I'll have to play with this. Um, so you can set up the 10 alarms. It's really, really great uh, for uh, gathering. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can set it up to real world time or, or uh, you know, game time. I was like, yeah, that is like a nice quality of life thing that I was like really surprised by. Yeah. Um, that's right. It wasn't mud. It was like manure or some fertilizer, I think. Um, Poop. <laughs> Poop. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's really the bulk of, of all the goods. I mean, there's lots of other little things too. They're, they're, they're so close to a feature that I've long wanted, and it's a uh, it, it's the roulette for the mounts and the minions to only pull from your favorites. Mm -hmm. yes. So now you yes. can favorites. Now you can yes. favorites. My hope is that they'll say, you know, four point five. Now you can, you can your roulette will only pull from your favorites, and so then I'll is... never have to see the mana cutter again. And I wish we could delete <laughs> mounts. Like I wish we could delete them. I'd be like, I don't wow. ever want you again. Aww. I hate that mount. I hate uh, one, of the, one of the things I do want to talk about, um, this was in the patch notes. Um, a lot of people didn't notice this because it's towards the bottom. It's just text. It's like whatever. Uh, in preparation for new UI skins, the colors used in certain parts of the UI have been adjusted. Is cool. this leading into add-ons? Hmm. Or is it, it I mean, add-ons in the form of just UI skins? Hmm. Maybe I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is going to be what I thought the uh, job UI, specific UI, was going to be. <laughs> Where I don't want of... any of that crap. Take your gauges away. Get out. <laughs> we're going to Something... simplify. Content. We're going to bring those lower parsing people up a little higher. And to do that, we're going to take away buttons so that there's less things <laughs> to look at. But then we're going to also include job gauges, um, give you 10 uh, of your action, your right. sub job actions to use. Um, and then we're going to include an action just for some instances. Sub jobs just literally need to come back. I, I hope, trials. I hope they're trying answer. to simplify things. Yeah. Now, sub jobs can be really simple if you don't focus on skills, if you focus on traits. Let's say take protect. There you, go. you have you could sub job up to three jobs because rock, paper, scissors is easy development. 
um, protect can either be extra defense, it can be a region, and it, or it could be um, a spike shield or something like that. Based off of what sub job you pick, all of a sudden your kit is a little bit different. And that's that's where it's like people want the freaking skill trees and Yoshi P doesn't talk about it. I'm like, make something Final Fantasy. Sub jobs are Final Fantasy, but don't make it skills based, make it traits based. Because that or don't even don't even do sub jobs. Take it one step forward. Okay. I mean back in FF1, you could upgrade your jobs. Oh yeah. I've always yeah. wished I've always wished we would see that. Maybe like, maybe maybe five we don't get any new traditional jobs. Maybe it's all you know, Paladin goes to like Templar or something. Yeah, elite and that classes? Second year. <laughs> it's just elite classes. I wouldn't be surprised if they got rid of classes either. But I think that's what they've been building to. Every time they introduce a job without a class, once they did it, heaven's word, I go, they're delete. They're 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 on a path to delete classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking that it's going to happen with 5.0. I hope it does. It's. I it's, like it's how such a generous thing. you're being with the with the time span. Why not like 6.0? <laughs> they're going to need a little more time, I think. No, I, when I when I when I sat down, I was thinking, um, I'm a, it'll be I was like it, it would be risky for four, because just the amount of work that has to happen. But 5.0, which is four, you know four years from when they. I mean, first it's clear they're not doing a lot of super new original stuff. I like how you're answering me like with like your serious logic, and I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've thought about this stuff way too much way or too maybe much. or maybe just the right amount maybe nobody else is thinking about it enough well somebody's got to stand up you know and fight the glamour nazis so there you go <laughs> oh my god brian I, I, need okay. that, I need to do that like in an alex jones voice uh, <laughs> no, you can no. you can All like right. glamour and still be a hardcore raider okay i bring i bring the uh, i bring the the software engineer and the uh and the comedy so that's what i uh, there you go <laughs> All right, and that's it. That's the patch notes. That's all the stuff that we've gone through, all the stuff we've played so far. Um, I guess we'll go ahead. And, anybody else have anything else they want to add before we uh, start? You know, I, I included this mail thing. I don't know how often you get mail or send mail, but if you receive an item, mm-hmm. the uh, it used to be that you had to wait a good like 20 seconds to hit delete, or it would just throw the empty mail in your like trash mm-hmm. thing, and you have to delete it later. Now, it does not let you hit the delete button until it's actually ready to delete. So you don't That's have nice. all this crap in your mail. <laughs> and if you, nice. if you don't often send or get stuff, you don't care about this. But I do. Usually, like, once every six months when there's something with, like, an in-game item code. That's the only time I ever... This is me I sending maps back and forth to each other. That's what that is. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, I am really excited uh, for uh, FanFest and for November. Um, at the same time, based off of where the MSQ left off, I don't know what the hell they're going to share People with are us. so angry about that cliffhanger, and I love it. Well, I love it. I think it was fantastic, but I'm saying that, you know how they'll, they'll, they'll we typically get the trailer and stuff like that, and, and there's things that you learn from the trailer, and they don't show you the whole trailer because uh, there's more stuff that you learn that you want to learn through the story with 4.5, <laughs> right? Like, I don't even know what they show us. Like, if they show us anything, it's like, oh, my God. I, I just feel like... It's going to be interesting. The splash to see screen what. of the uh, the title. Yeah, for we're just showing it. you Done. the logo. We're like, all right. That's what it is. Have fun. Shadowbringers. <laughs> we didn't talk about that, did we? No, but I loved y'all's write up. Like Gamerscape put a really. I, great I love that that landed literally right before E three, and nobody picked it up until like four weeks ago. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah people get there's all <laughs> kinds of gaming things to talk about, but the, the what y'all broke down with, ARR being the the, the morning, you know, Heaven's Word being the day. Uh, you know, Stormblood Crimson being kind of the evening or the, you know, sh- shifting into the evening uh, and the 5.0 being the night um, leads me to where it's like for everything they're teasing about a calamity, it leads me to logically think that would be 6.0 because then 6.0 would be a brand new day, you know, uh, as a part of any kind of day night cycle. Sure. But um, they're, they're teasing me like my, my brain, like I'm like, is it happening now? Is it happening in Who 2020? Knows? I don't know. 2021. We we have to have a, a spoiler show where we just talk about them. We, we will work on this. It'll, I be, have, I have, it'll be a short thing. Yeah, I have no many one. Ideas. It'll be we'll, two hours. No, I. <laughs> All right, uh, Nate. Uh, do you want to do your plugs, your shout outs? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, LimitBreakRadio.com for uh, all things Limit Break Radio. Uh, Make sure you join us for the community after party on Friday uh, of FanFest. That's going to be an awesome time. Uh, Again, you can uh, RSVP and get, uh, you know, get your uh, pre-registration on 
uh, VIP tickets, all of that good stuff. It's all available all over at LimitBreakRadio.com. Also, make sure that you're checking out Checkpoint Radio. It's our uh, much more uh, all-encompassing show. Uh, it's an actual radio show. It's not just a podcast. Uh, we're on about 60 different radio stations throughout the United States and Canada. For full uh, schedule of when we air in your city, as well as full episodes on demand, interviews, podcasts, everything related to Checkpoint, you can check that all out over at CheckpointRadio.com. Big announcements ahead for Checkpoint Radio and for Limit Break Radio. So uh, be on the lookout for those. There you go. Uh, and as for us here at Eighth Right Radio, if you want to send us an email, uh, tell us what you think of the show, ask us questions, you can do that. Eighth Right Radio at GamerEscape.com. You can tweet at us at GamerEscape at Eighth Right Radio. You can also visit us on our Discord channel, uh, where we also now have a, uh, a spoiler channel, if you want to talk about that for, for the next uh, upcoming week here. Uh, that's discord.gg slash gamer escape thank you to everybody for joining us here in the chat thank you to zanidra Bryn, and nate for joining me today and uh we will see you guys here uh after fan fest next month two months no well, we'll probably be back next month i was i keep thinking it's like october i don't know why. i'm like just excited for november it's gonna be a, a busy november's gonna be great october uh is gonna be also uh great for many 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 games coming out over the we'll next be, we'll months. Be back. yeah and we'll be we'll be doing the uh the giveaway here for you guys do, uh, joining us on twitch here shortly so stick around for that okay okay